What's happening guys? Today I wanna to go over exactly what to look for when you pull a 5.4 liter phaser off of your vehicle. Now there's about four points on here that you can do a quick visual inspection, two of them with it still on the vehicle, and you can tell exactly if your phaser is faulty or not. These are four common areas that these can fail on here. So let's get to it. I'm gonna bring you in on the bench here so we can look at it and show you. I think this one has about three out of the four failures on here. Um, so you guys can definitely tell what to look for and how it looks. Okay, so this is the phaser itself. Here's the reluctor ring on it. Here is the return spring on it, the teeth, and then of course the locking pin back here that locks it to the camshaft. These bolts right here are just to um, bolt the half, this back disc part right here, and hide the guts on the inside so we fully uh, pressurize in there with oil to phase the cam. Now the one thing I wanna talk about, well, before I get into the failure points on here, is this phaser right here, you can see if you're still getting old stock, you may get one that just has an L on it, okay? And then it has no other marking. Well, you're like, how am I gonna use that for the right-hand bank? Where do you time it at? It's literally 180. There's actually a mark on the other side, it's not marked. There's the L, 180. And there's another mark over here. This is the mark you use for the right-hand side, that tooth right there, lined with that mark. Now, the service ones that came out later, they had an R on this side and an L on this side, and they were universal, and obviously it was very self-explanatory. But these early ones that are still getting out there somehow, um, they only had the L on them or the R. They can be used on both sides. They're all exactly the same. You just need to flip your timing marks is all. On to the failures on here. Now this one's obviously not bolted to the vehicle, so let's do this real quick. You can see on the inside here, these, um, these roll pins, there's three of them in here, and you can see how loose this one is. I mean, they're just, they're very loose in here, and they can also be missing from here, and these actually hold on the reluctor ring properly. Now, this would normally be sucked in, okay, flat. What you want to look at is this right here. Now, you can see right now, because it's not bolted in, um, it, it's definitely sticking out. You see the top part here sticking out, and down below here, it's way in. I mean, you could see it's, it's definitely a lot closer to the base, and out here it's just sticking way out. Let's see if I can get you a better idea of that. There you go. You can see how it's just cocked way out on there. That's going to cause issues with your cam sensors not being able to read it properly. So look for that. That's one of the things you can look at once the valve cover is off on there. Now, the way it should look is the way, let's see if we can do it on here. It's just like that. It's perfect, perfectly perpendicular to the housing on here all the way around. That way it can read uh, the cam, uh, you know, the, the cam position properly the whole time it's going around on here. Um, the other thing to look out for is this right here. Get you in here straight on. You see how there's three tone rings on this side and two on this side? Okay, they should line up with your tiny mark on here. You can see it right there. So that's one other thing to look for. It must line up with the tiny mark on there and that way you know um, it's not cocked in here any way. It's gonna cause any kind of P0016s or 118s on here. Uh, the other thing to look out for on here is the back side. Once it's off, you can look at the pin on here to make sure it's not worn and shiny on one side or mangled in any way, and that way you know that the last person that worked on it um, did not put it on there correctly, they did not align it to the camshaft itself properly, and it actually got uh, chewed up in there, and of course, at that point, it can move a little bit, and your timing would be off also. Um, I'm gonna go inside this real quick. Um, those are the, th the four points, but I'm gonna go inside of this real quick to give you a better idea of what's inside here in case you didn't see the other video and how the internals of the, the phaser can cause noise um, going down the road.
Okay, so pull these bolts out of here. The one bolt we're gonna leave in here is this one. We're just gonna loosen it. And that's because that actually holds the return spring down here. It's the, it's the base locating point for it, so we'll leave that one in. Uh, I wanna show you the inside of this thing here though. Oh, there goes that. Um, but anything that gets damaged inside of here, now these are being phased, these veins are being phased to the actual camshaft in the center here. You see the center attaches to it, and it's using oil pressure to move these veins. Okay, so we're gonna phase the camshaft in relation to base timing. Um, what can happen is these fins inside of here can get damaged where they just, they just fall apart inside of here. And then this thing's gonna go back and forth very violently because of all that, it, that the oil pressure being erratically flowing inside of here. And that can cause a lot of freaking noise in your, your uh, VCT system on here. Let's see if I can show you here. Now I understand by this point, this is a last resort inspection, but if you are going inside of here to check for fin damage in any way, just make sure you leave that bolt in so you don't get your fingers nicked by that return spring. It's gonna hurt a lot. Believe me, I did it the first time I opened one of these. Um, phasers, phasers are very, very expensive. There goes the heat. Um, they're very expensive. The one thing you want to do is order them through Amazon, the OEM Ford phasers from Amazon. And the reason being is they're around 200 something, whereas from the dealer, I think they're close to $400 or 300 something each. Uh, so you can get really expensive real quick so you can save yourself a lot of money by buying them on Amazon. I'll put links to that down below. Okay, so I hope that helps you guys understand where the failure points are on there. Some of them may not be so evident until you get, uh, I guess, instructed exactly where to look on there. Then they'll be very evident on what uh, the, the failure point is on your particular phaser. Like I said, I'll put links down below to Amazon for these phasers from Ford. That's the ones I recommend, and you can get them for around $200, 230 something like that, instead of $330, $400 plus, at the dealer per phaser so you can save a lot of money and get your vehicle fixed up all at the same time.